All right. Um, now, joining us, though, as usual, to talk to our um, letter from Wellington and Councillor Tony Randall joins us from uh, that area. Um, we've just had uh, Professor Ramesh uh, Thakur on. Do you remember him from Otago University? Were you there when he was there? He was a political lecturer, a uh, science lecturer then. Uh, no, I didn't, but then I didn't do political science like you. Um, I did a science, I did a real science uh, degree. <laughs> yes, I don't know why they called it science, because there's no science in politics, but there you go. Um, now, uh, having said that, you, there was a bit of politics happening over the weekend in your neck of the woods, um, where the Wellington City Council contorted itself into, it seemed, a whole series of different directions. They were almost six positions out of the Kama Sutra, I have to say. Tony, um, over the Inflections New Zealand rally on Saturday, what was your take on it? Yes, well, I mean, in our last session, we sort of broke that story that, that uh, you know, the council was, uh, one of the councillors was trying to do everything he could to stop it. Um, and But it went ahead. Um, the council, they, they went through the process, and they, in the end, it's, it was really a, a victory for for the, the democratic process because it went ahead and people protested peacefully outside and the world didn't end. Yeah, um, somebody else mentioned to me, I think it was Hugh, said that the protest itself, uh, actually on the day, got very little coverage uh, by the mainstream media. I think it got coverage from stuff but that was about it, or maybe Radio New Zealand or one of the two, anyhow. But outside that wasn't. He said that uh, it wasn't covered on the television news on the Saturday night either. Well, I guess that we, have, we have a media now that gets so attracted to, to, to the conflict side of, of everything. If there's no drama, then it's not news, even if it's important. I actually thought it was pretty good. I understand there's around 500 protesters went there, uh, stood outside. I know people who went, and, uh, you know, and democracy happened. Um, now, Sean got very upset because he went in his capacity as a journalist to that and said that they closed the cafe because the cafe staff wanted to protest against the function itself. That doesn't seem very um, welcoming. No. Well, look, I, I, I saw after the fact um, comments uh, coming back about how, while it went ahead, it seems that the venue uh, was, you know, did a few things that were, you know, as described, were petty and vindictive and even childish. They even report that they removed the soap from the women's toilets and uh, and also didn't provide the audiovisual gear that comes standard, you know, when you hire the venue, as well as, of course, closing the cafe. And one of the things about the closing the cafe that's important is that, the, that by closing the cafe, if someone wanted to get a drink or something to eat, they'd have to leave the venue again, of course, run the gauntlet. And, you know, so really that was a little bit more serious given, you know, the animosity that was potentially there. Uh, around this, and so uh, look, it, was, it wasn't it wasn't good, but I'm glad it was peaceful. Right, but Tony, the other thing that came out of that was still this fundamental disconnect between, and it, that was the thesis of, of Professor Th uh, Thaka this morning, this fundamental disconnect between. Uh, if you like, the technological, the public sector, the um, educated elites and, and the rest of us and sort of the gender ideology issue is, is, is illustrative of that. Do, do you accept that thesis? I, I do and, and, and I come across it every single day in, uh, in the Wellington City Council. Um, you know, one of the things that annoys me, for example, is the fact that uh, in promotion to Rayo, the city councils made the Toreo names the most prominent. So if you go and look up on our website, say you're looking up a date, they've got the, the Maori name for Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday first, and then you've got to look on the end of the line to see the English to find out actually what day it's on. Uh, you know, that sort of stuff is just, you know, you go to the libraries, you know, the Maori name is, you know, trying to find something and you've got to, you know, I don't speak any Toreo. I mean, I... You know, most people don't. 95% of people don't speak to Rayo, and yet it's everywhere in front of us. It just annoys me. It's just not helpful for a lot of people. And I also work, so I attend a multicultural council where all the representatives from the different ethnic groups uh, come along. And for them, you know, English is a second language. They struggle even more. They tell me directly they struggle even more with trying to understand what actually is happening in Wellington. 
Yes, I can understand that. I mean, it's hard enough to understand English, but then I've got to understand a, a language that is only spoken in New Zealand and um, not even by the majority of people um, who uh, ethnic origins it is. I'm looking, as you say now, at the Wellington City Council website, and yes, I see what you mean. So all the subheadings are in bold print, Māori, and then in lesser print, uh, the English translation is given. That would seem, just to be honest with you, Tony, as if your Wellington City Council staff are giving the finger to the government, basically. Uh, well, no, I, they're not. They're, they're probably more um, just <coughs> following along the, the policies that they've had for the last decade, um, which is to uh, give extra prominence to, you know, these, these key, I'd say, left agenda issues. I mean, they just get the money, they get the... I mean, we've got a whole um, group, uh, senior manager, right up including an ELT manager um, who supports the Maori. We've got two Poewi who are representative of the two local tribe who sit on our council subcommittees with a vote and they're paid the same as the councillors. So, you know, there's a whole lot of, of, um, of extra, what's the word, a special treatment, I suppose, and look, don't get me wrong, I'm happy to support the, the treaty partners, um, but, you know, you, it, it, sometimes it stops being democratic, in, in my opinion. Are they partners, Tony? And what do you, what do you mean by partners? What is, what is, what's a partner? Well, um, oh, dear, dear, dear. Yeah, do I want to wade into this? Um, well, no, no, no. The, the reason I'm asking you is because I hear a lot of people elected to local government say exactly what you've just said. I'm not trying to tr trip you up. But no. I always, uh, when I say, oh, you know, our partners, and I go, hmm, what, what, what partners, what does that mean? What is the partnership that you've got between a particular group in the community and your council that no other particular group in the community has access to. What 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 partnership is the Wellington City Council in with your local iwi and how does that work in practical terms? Well I think that if you read through the council policies you'll see that uh, everything is consulted includes special consultation with with Maori part with our Maori local representatives um, and and every report has an impact section on the impact on Maori. Um, this Maori are, are so. What does it mean for me? I'm not sure what it means actually. Uh, there, are, there are more uh, Indian uh, cultural Indians in Wellington. Something like 35,000 Wellingtonians are of, from the Indian continent. Um, than there are Maori, and yet they don't have anything like the same special voice or consideration taken for them as Wellingtonians. I mean, I'm more of a we're all New Zealanders sort of person, so I, I just struggle with this, uh, this special treatment side of things. Um, I, I, I take part in it because I'm a councillor and, and, and I do really like working with the Maori groups that I do work with and they're very positive and everything, but, you know, is, is, it, is it fair treatment for all? It's not, sometimes it's not. Well, let's, let's just take that through because it sort of relates to what Professor Tharka has been talking about in our first hour. Um, so, and listen, Tony, I'm not having a go at the Wellington City Council over this because there are other councils in exactly the same, do the same thing as you, which is um, we've got a policy and we're going to bring it to council, but we're going to run it through our local iwi partners first. Now, I, as an elected councillor, and you as an elected councillor, never get to see the draft. So I don't know how much influence the iwi had on the draft information that is finally presented to me. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, I don't know how much influence they've got either. So did they say, no, that's unacceptable, let's go back and do it again until it's acceptable, and then it goes to you as a council? Are you aware of how the process works? I'm aware of it, and you're exactly right. I don't know what influence um, the, the, uh, our Maori partners or whether they even cared. Uh, I, one of the decisions that we made recently, for example, we made decisions on the long term, on the district plan, and one of the decisions was whether the Johnsonville line 
was a rapid transit line, which is you know goes towards high density housing, and it, it was agreed that it was. A, so the commission has re- recommended it was not. Yeah. Um, but the the lefties wanted it to be, and the left side wanted it to be mass transit because that would be more more high density housing would be permitted. It got over the line with the votes of the two poiwi. In other words, a majority of the elected members voted against it being rapid transit, but the two poiwi had the votes, so it is rapid transit, and, and now it's rapid transit. So how how are the two? Uh, how are the two local reps? On what basis did they say it was rapid transit, and what? And how does it connect into the uh, Maori Tanga side of the influence? <laughs> I don't know. Um, it just seems to me a train line with public transport, but but that shows that you know uh, on the margins they can tilt the whole decision of the council. Ah, uh, the trains and the treaty—they go together like love and marriage, don't they? Eh? Of course, they all thought about that back in 1840. One day there'll be trains.